on. As the songs were playing, I, God took me back to my past. And he showed me how far he's brought me from what I used to be then. The things I've been through, the hurt I've been to. And he's brought me, he showed me everything that I've been through. And to be here is such a blessing. You don't know how blessed you are. Yes. Everything that God took you out of, it's a blessing to be here. Yes. Don't ever think for one minute that because God put you through the hurt, the pain, the death, that he doesn't love you but there was a purpose for it yes. for you to be here Lord. so you can belong to him yes. so he can make you into something Hallelujah. that is of light you know some of us in here lost loved ones some of us in here we still carry that pain and we can't forgive we can't forgive but I encourage you today to let go let go of that hurt and pain and forgive yes. because when you do God will do such amazing yes. things he will transform you like never before don't ever forget where you came from don't ever forget where you came from because that shows how great our God is yes. because greater in you greater is he in you than anything of this world Praise you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you. So welcome, Sister Harris. Um, just knowing her, she's from Odessa. She's such a wonderful woman of God. Amazing, amazing singing. <laughs> we, she has CDs that we bought. She, her voice is just phenomenal on there. God's blessed her in so many ways. If you welcome Sister Harris. try to sing this morning. Um, I don't normally sing when I speak, but um, I felt this song on my heart. I felt that it goes along with what I have to say to you this morning. Um, I want to say that I feel like God has confirmed what he laid on my heart. Whew. Yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit loud. I have a big voice, Sister Tiffany. <laughs> I used to sing with my sisters and um, my baby's sister. Okay, that's it. Just a second. My baby sister had a voice that just boomed out, and my other sister and I just. Um, would have to just about put the mic in our in our mouth for you to hear us and my uh, my baby sister would have to stand back like this but somewhere along the line God gave me a little bit more volume <laughs> and so um, I'm gonna sing a song that the title it is on my CD and I did not bring any with me. my husband said why didn't you and I said I just completely forgot about it I meant to and then I forgot <clears throat> but um, this is on my CD. It is actually my favorite song on the CD. My grandson is five years old, and uh, he'll get in the car sometimes, and he'll say, I want to sing, He Didn't Throw the Clay Away. And um, I'm going to sing it, and then you'll know why when I start talking to you this morning. So worship with me as I sing, He Didn't Throw the Clay Away. I came back to him, a vessel unworthy, so scarred with sin. 
But he did not despair. He started over again. And I bless the day he didn't throw the clay away. He fashions the clay, a vessel of honor I am today, all because Jesus didn't throw the clay away. throw the clay away when he started molding you. Hallelujah. All right. I'm going to speak to you today on damaged goods. And uh, how many of you have ever gone to the store? You bought cans that were bent a little bit, packages that were dented, damaged goods. Usually you can buy those cheaper because they are damaged. In November of this year, I attended a um, management institute training in Albuquerque. It started on uh, Thursday, or Friday morning and uh, ended on Sunday morning. And on Sunday morning, the very final day of the training, um, we went down to breakfast and um, we normally have one training session left that morning, but because bad weather was coming in, um, our director decided that we would just load the bus early and head back. And I'm glad we did. <laughs> but um, that morning, I found myself a seat at a table in the hotel restaurant. And um, at that table were two of our agencies, board members, there was a consultant. There were some other agency staff members at the table as well. But also sitting at that table all by herself was a young girl. And as we sat there, we began to talk to her. The story that she told us that followed has made a, a huge impact on my life. And it is from that incident that I want to um, base a foundation on what I speak on today. Um, 
as we sat there, we began to talk to her. And um, there was nothing that was extraordinary about her. She was a young girl, looked like she was about 14 or 15. Um, she had on ragged clothes, an oversized coat, and um, she was very friendly. And she smiled a lot. And I noticed when she smiled, she had teeth that were rotted out, a lot of teeth that were missing. So I could tell there had been a lot of damage done to her teeth. But it was that friendliness and those characteristics that made what she told us seem so touching. When I looked at her and when she told us her story, it touched my heart. She first of all asked us what our reason was for being there. And um, we shared with her that that we were there with the Head Start Agency from Odessa, Texas. And then she mentioned to us that she once lived in Odessa. She had attended school there. And um, that her brothers attended school. And more recently, she had lived in Carlsbad, New Mexico, before she found her way to Albuquerque. She told us that her insurance, well, first of all, she told us that she was a ward of the state which meant that she was on state funds. And then she said that her insurance, basically the, the funds that the state provided, paid for her to stay at the motel for a month. And that while she was there, she was trying her best to get her life in order. Um, she told us a little bit of her background, didn't go into a lot of details, but did tell us that she has, is not allowed to have any contact with her family. Um, she cannot even contact her brothers by phone. The only person she can contact, and it is by phone, is her mother. And um, it was something that she had done in her past. All that she shared with us is that it involved drugs. But because of that, she had been cast out and could not have any touch with her family. Court orders provided her, or prevented her from going anywhere near even her mother. Like I said, they did allow her to talk to her on the phone. She told us, though, that since she had been in Albuquerque, she had found God and she had found peace in her life. And um, after that, we talked a little bit longer, just normal, everyday things. And she did tell us, I believe she told us she was 21, but I'm not sure that I believe that to be truthful. Um, but it's possible, but um, I in my mind I'm thinking if she's a ward of the state that she's probably a minor but anyway um, she got up after a while she had already been eating when we got there there were a couple of plates that she had stacked there where she had eaten some food in the restaurant that we stayed at uh, you get a free breakfast with your overnight stay and um, it's a breakfast buffet and uh, she had already eaten a couple of plates and she got up and went to refill her plate for what appeared to be probably the third time. And after she finished eating, she said her goodbyes. She left the table and she walked away. After she walked away, those of us that remained there began talking about and discussing what we had uh, talked to her about. And one of the people there mentioned the amount of food that she had eaten and how she was so small. How did she say so small? in the, that much food and someone suggested that possibly she ate that much because that might be her only meal that she got that day that was a free meal and maybe she didn't have money to buy a meal anywhere else so as a group and we are a faith-based group so as a group we bowed our heads and we offered up a prayer for this girl it has been since that time in November, the middle part of November, that she has been on my thoughts often. I do not know her name. She never told us her name. Uh, I honestly don't know if she's still in Albuquerque or she's moved on somewhere else. But God knows where she's at. He knows her name. He knows her heart. And she has been in my thoughts and in my prayers. One day, I was thinking about her, and I was on Facebook, and a friend of mine posted uh, a short paragraph. I honestly don't even remember what was in the paragraph except for two words. Damaged goods. And so I asked my friend if she minded if I used that for my thought for today. So God laid it on my heart way back in November. 
If you keep up with the news any at all, you'll read stories of young people like her, the homeless, the runaways. You'll read stories of overcrowded jails and a lot of other heartbreaking news that we have in our world today. Just this morning, I was reading um, uh, our local newspaper online, and there was a story in there about the homeless in Odessa and the effect that the cold weather that came in has on them. They estimated that there are at least 350 homeless people in Odessa. That sounds like a small amount to me, considering that there's over 200,000 people that live there. But that's all that they have record of. There are people that live in, in uh, uh, ruined homes and stuff that they have no way of knowing. But these are the people that are on the street. We have a, a local church that has a, a, a mission, and it's called Jesus House. And they reach out to the homeless. And on cold nights, they will go out at night. And they will go out into the bushes and into the trees and in the outskirts of town. And they will take blankets and food and little heaters. Uh, where they can, kerosene heaters, where they can heat themselves. They even provide tents for some of these people. Um, but if you read the news, you'll know a lot of the statistics about this. Um, it's a sad thing. Uh, the Bible tells us that the poor we have with us always. So that's not something that I think is just for today's world. I believe it in the Bible days there were people that probably were also homeless. Uh, maybe had, the Bible says that even the Son of Man had no place to lay his head. So, um, but it was after reading my friend's posting, those two words, I realized that that's exactly what we were when we came to Jesus. We were damaged goods. It does not matter if you came from a wealthy home or poor home. We were damaged by sin. And so when we came to Jesus, we needed someone that would mend the damage and restore us. And restore us to make us whole. In John 8, we read a story of a woman who in today's language would be considered damaged goods. Now in this story, it talks about how Jesus had been to the Mount of Olives. Then early in the morning, he returned to the city. He made his way to the temple, as was the way that he usually did. When he got there, people began coming up to him. So he sat down, he began to teach them. And as often was the case, there were a group of people, two groups of people that all always joined the group. Uh, the scribes and the Pharisees made their way to this group as, as well. And as usual, hoping to trick him into saying something that they could use against him, uh, they brought with them a certain woman. Now this woman had been caught in the very act of adultery. Now today... We live in a world where there's not hardly any shame in that. But in that day, that shame and that sin was worthy of death. If you were caught in the act of adultery, the Bible says and the law says that you were to be stoned to death. Now, they put her in the midst of the group where Jesus was, was talking. And they proceeded to tell Jesus exactly what her sin, her crime was. They even quoted the scripture, the law, which said that she should be stoned to death for her sins. Now, this, is so, this, this story is always amazing. I've heard this story many, many times over my life. And it always amazes me how Jesus acted. He didn't get up and say, start pointing his finger at him or anything like that. He calmly just bent over, didn't say a word, and he started writing in the dust. And actually, it doesn't even say that he wrote. It doesn't say what he wrote. He just, I guess he might have just doodled in the dust. Just, you know? Um, but he knew exactly what they were trying to do. And instead of falling into the trap that they had set, he just leaned down and wrote in the sand, acting like he didn't even hear them. And they continued to question him until finally he looked up and he said, the, the words that we all know well. He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. Now, can you imagine their reaction? 
I'm sure they all just sort of looked at each other. Were like, I'm not going to say anything. Ah, oh, you, you, uh, oh, not me, not me. Well, eventually, all of those people, those men that were accusing her, walked away. They couldn't say anything. Why? Because every one of them knew in their heart that they had done something in their life that they were guilty of. They were convicted of their own conscience. And they turned and walked away because of it. But here's what's amazing. The story doesn't end there. After the woman's accusers walked away, they left the woman standing there with Jesus. And after they had all walked away, he turned to her and he asked her, Where are your accusers? Where did they go? Did anybody condemn you? And she replied, No one had. Now, for me, the next part of the story is the most amazing. And it's the most powerful part. Jesus simply turned to her and he said, Woman, no one else condemned you. And neither do I. But he added one more part to that, Sister Amy. He said this, Go and sin no more. Just like that, all of her sins, all of her crime had been forgiven by the spoken word of the forgiver. And that's the amazing part for me. You see, I and almost anyone here was just like that woman. Maybe it wasn't the act of adultery. We don't know what it was. I don't know what happened has happened in your past. Sister Tiffany spoke of our past. Brother Flannery spoke last night of putting our past in the trash, throwing it away. You see, that's what we do when God forgives us. Our sins are cast into the sea of forgetfulness. They're thrown away. But we all have a past. And I came to Jesus one day as most of you have, we were condemned. The Bible says that we, in our sins, we would be condemned. But the amazing thing is, is that Jesus forgave me and he forgave you. And not only did he forgive us, he told us that we were free. Told us to go and sin no more. And when that happens, the Bible says that we're made a new creature. I was no longer damaged. I was made new by the cleansing blood of Jesus Christ. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In the 15th chapter of Luke, we read a parable that was told by Jesus. And once again, he was in a group which included the scribes and the Pharisees. Their one purpose in life during, during his ministry was to trick him and trap him into saying or doing something that they could condemn him and put him to death for. Once again, that's what happened here. So after telling the parable of the one lost sheep, and I know we all know that story, or I hope we all.